So we are here with this question, sort an arrays of zeros, ones, and twos. Now the problem statement is quite simple. It just says that, okay, given an array ARR containing only three values, zeros, ones, and twos, we need to sort this array in ascending order. That means, seeing the sample test case, we have all these values cluttered up. We need to, uh, we need to make all the zeros on the one side, then all the ones, and then all the twos. We simply need to sort this array, okay? Similarly, we can see the same example here. We have three type of values. We have zeros, we have ones, we have twos. We need to sort these out. So this might seem uh, very simple to you that we just need to perform sorting, but the straightforward sorting this array up is not the actually thing which is wanted by the question, okay? So let's go ahead and try to discuss the uh, approaches for this one. The very first approach, well, almost everyone is thinking of just using the dot sort operation. Now the thing is, this will get your work done very uh, like very easily you will get your work done but what is the time complexity behind it well, for that it would be taking order of n log n time complexity now the question specifically mentions that okay the array has only three values zeros ones and twos why are we not making any use of this information because if such information is given that means we need to go and we need to think in, the, in that direction so that we can achieve an optimal solution right this n log n is going to be too much for this particular question so we need to improve our uh, like improve our approach here and we need to make use of this fact that only three values are present in it so just by this observation we go at our second approach okay the second approach says that assume you have this array with you okay assume this is a sample uh, array what do we need to do is we can count the number of zeros the number of ones and then the number of twos let's suppose we have three counters c1 c2 and c3 we try to traverse our array from this point till the end we encountered zero okay let's increase this count okay c1 corresponding to the count of zero c2 corresponding to the count of one and c3 corresponding to the count of two okay we again found zero let's increase the count we found one let's increase this count we found two i increase this one i again found one more two i increase this one i found one i increase this count and then i found zero i increased this one then I again found 1. That means C2 is to be increased. So what are the eventual values that I have? I have C1 as 3, C2 as 3, and C3 as 2. What I have done so far? I have traversed my array once completely, okay, from or uh, like from 0 to n minus 1, and I have calculated this. Now, nextly, what I can do is I can again go on iterating in my array, and this time I would simply fill up the values. How? Well, let's first exhaust, uh, exhaust C1. So for C1 times, I need to fill 0 in this array. That means 3 times, I need to fill zeros. Then for C2 times, that means 3 times, I need to fill 1. That I would do. And then for C3 times, I need to fill 2. That means 2 times, I need to fill 2. So this approach led us with this answer. Is this answer right? Yes, it is. Is this approach correct? Yes, it is. But what are we doing here? We are iterating this complete array two times. Okay, first uh, first iteration is to calculate the counts, and the next iteration is to place the values. Now this leads to like order of n only, but still we know that we are taking two iterations of it. Are we using any extra space? Well, we can say okay, we are not using any extra space here. It's order of one only. Okay, the space time complexity is order of one. Now although this is a very good approach but there exists a better approach. But before that, let's discuss the code for this one. So the code of this problem is really simple. We have taken three variables and this time uh, the code has taken C2, uh, C0, C1, and C2. C0 for zero, C1 for uh, ones, and C2 for twos. Quite simple. And then what are we doing? We are simply iterating in our array. We are iterating in our array. We are saying that whenever I encounter zero, increase this counter. Whenever I'm uh, in encountering one, I'm going to increase C1 and otherwise, I will increase C2. Once this iteration is completely done, I would have all of these three counts. And then I would just take up one index and I would fill all of these values. For C0 times, I'd be filling zero. For C1 times, I'd be filling one. And for C2 times, I'd be filling two. Now we know that this code can work, but it is not that optimal. We need to make it a little more optimal, right? So for that, we are now going to see another approach, which is going to be the most optimal one. So for this third approach, we will be taking help of DNF algorithm. Okay, DNF algorithm is a very famous algorithm. And DNF stands here for Dutch national flag. And we will be finding soon that why it is called so. Okay, so you need to assume 
that you have uh, three types of colored balls. You have red colored balls, you have white colored balls, and you have blue colored balls. Okay, arrange in a linear fashion like this. Now your task is to rearrange all of these so that you have groups of red, white, and blue. Now also we have a restriction that we only need to take one pass of this arrangement. We cannot come back and we cannot juggle. We just need to take one pass from this end till this end and the three partitions of my array should be made. Now this is the problem statement. So for this, what do we have to do is, we have to divide our array into a few parts. The first part would be containing all of the red balls. Then the next part would be containing all of the white balls. Then I would have this portion which would uh, signify or which would have my unsorted balls, which means these are still need to be placed in their respective positions. These are still what we are working on. Okay. And then the last part is the blue balls part. Uh, now, what do we do here? Every time from this portion, the unsolved portion, we pick up a ball and we see what is a suitable position for this one. We picked up, uh, we picked up this one. We saw, okay, it is blue. That means it is need to be kept in this part. Once that is done, we would encounter another ball which is white the correct position for this is this part right we would place it in uh, like in this in this particular um, part of our array and then the red ball would go here at its respective uh, respective chunk and then again white would again go here once this is done that means this unsorted or you can say unsolved part is over we would be left with three equal uh, like three parts in this array and those three parts are going to be the red balls part, the white balls part, and the blue balls part. And uh, just because this uh, symbolizes like a Dutch, uh, the Dutch flag, this algorithm is named after that, and it is called as Dutch national flag algorithm. Okay, now this is to linearly sort three objects. And in our question, we are doing something very similar, right? We have these elements. We have three elements. We have zeros, we have ones, and we have twos. We are going to make this uh, like we are going to implement this algorithm now. Okay, how are we going to do that in our question? Let's take this example for it. Assuming I am in the middle of solving my complete um, like complete problem statement, complete array, and such that I have my array divided into three portions. The first one is this one. That means from the beginning till low, I have one portion, and the other portion is from low till my another pointer mid. Okay, and then the third portion is high from high till the end okay which would have my twos now between middle and high this portion is the unsolved portion unsolved portion so every time we are picking up a value we are picking up a uh, pick, picking that up from the unsolved part and we are trying to place that at its particular location wheresoever it is needed to go how are we going to do that let's see i have to always focus a uh, focus upon the middle value that i have so at middle, I have two. Well, what is the correct position for two? We know that after high is the correct position for two. So now I need to perform a swap. Swap between mid and high. So once I perform swap between mid and high, that means this goes here and this goes here, I would have this two as here and this zero as here. Now that I have added one more to my high, my high would decrease. You can say move in this direction once. So I would take my high from here and I would move it here. Now that you can see the, uh, the middle value that I hold is zero. And where does zero go? Zero go here before low. So for that, I need to swap this low with this, uh, this uh, mid, uh, mid variable that I have. So here, once we swap like this, this one goes here, this one goes there, the values will be zero, zero is here and one comes here. After swapping the zero, now I, I know that which place I have actually increased the count of. That means, okay, zero's portion is increasing. I need to move my low pointer, okay? Because I have done one fixing, I also need to move my mid pointer to go ahead to a new element, okay? So this goes like this. My mid pointer would also move here. Now that my mid is here, again, I have to choose, okay? I have to see what is happening here. What element is it? It's one. Where does one go? Well, one is actually at uh, its correct position if we just move it one step here, right? So for that, in this condition, once we have one in, at the mid, we would just increase the mid, okay? We would just increase the mid and that would make one fall 
in its respective position. Now again, I have zero at mid. What do I do? I've already increased my low once here. Okay, make sure of that. So yeah, once my low is at its correct position here and omit it at, uh, at this position, I would do the swapping here and here. So once the values are swapped, a zero will come here and my one will go there. So after these many swappings, you can see what has happened. After this one, my mid would move for one more time. It would go here. It would check that, okay, it is also one. That means I need to move ahead. Once I move ahead, my mid would go here. Now here I can see I'm having a clash If uh, and also my mid value is two. Even if I want to swap, that value would be swapped with itself and high would move one step on this side. Here I would encounter a situation where my highest value is getting lesser than my mid. This is where I have to stop. That means my middle portion is exhausted. My middle portion or the unsolved portion is exhausted and which actually leads me to the answer that the complete array that I was having is now sorted as you can see in this example. So this was just to explain you because um, like I've taken this array and I have like uh, taken up a middle step of this complete approach so that you can understand better how the, how these two pointers or these three pointers are working. Now let's see one uh, example in which we are dealing with the complete array from the initial point till the uh, like till we sort it out okay so that you can have a very clear understanding of Dutch national flag algorithm. Uh, let's just start with this one. So assume this is the array. Initially my low and mid are both going to be at the first element and my high is going to be on the last element. Now what we do we've already seen that if my mid has zero we swap we swap the low with the mid correct and we increase low and mid that is what we do. So here you can see I have my mid as zero so I would swap low and middle well this would not affect much because that we are on the same element and then we have to increase both of these pointers so that is what we have done here. Now I can see I'm getting one uh, at my mid so this point if my mid is equal to equal to one then what do I do? I do not swap anything because I am actually like very near to the position I have to place one at just one back. So I would like instead of uh, doing anything else, I would just increase my mid by one. So I would do mid plus equals one. That's all. That is what we have done here. Now my mid has two. What do we do once my mid is two? Again swap. This time I swap mid with high. And because I'm increasing the portion of high, I would decrease high's value by one so that we can uh, like move our high pointer in this direction from right to left once. Okay, this is what we have done. We have swapped the values and I have increased it once. Now you can see after the swap is done and after high has moved, my mid still has the value two because that is how it was saw, uh, like uh, that is what we got after the swapping. Now we, what do we need to do? We again need to perform the swap. I would again perform the swap and this time you can see the values are fixed correctly. Okay, and I have moved my high as well. So once this is done again my mid is having one as its um, one as the element what do we do once we have one we just move our mid so once i move my mid i would have this situation once i have zero at my mid i swap low and the mid so these two values would be swapped and you can see uh, after the swapping i have my high here and my mid here that means my highest value is now uh, like is now less than my mid's value this is the breaking point. We know that if this has happened, that means my array is sorted. Okay, let's quickly see the code for this approach as well. The code is quite simple, just what we have discussed in the diagrams, completely the same. We have n keeping the track of length of the array. Then we have three pointers low, high, and mid. Low initially at zero, high initially at the last element n minus one, mid at zero as well. And then while mid is less than or equal to high. At uh, till that point, I'm going to keep on moving. I will check if my value is zero. If the middle value is zero, then I would perform the swap between low and mid here, and I would increase my low and the middle by one step. Otherwise, if my mid is one, I would simply increase my mid by one step. And if that is not the case, that means we have two. For that, I would perform the swapping between the middle and the high element here, and I would decrease my high. That means I am moving one step, uh, like in the reverse direction. So once this loop is successfully executed, okay, and the, uh, this condition is reached, uh, this loop would break and my complete array would be sorted that I can return later. So what is the best thing about this, uh, this approach? How many times are we traversing this array? 
we are just traversing this array for once, making its complexity to be order of n. And we are also not taking any extra space for this algorithm, because the space complexity is going to be order of 1. So this property actually makes this particular um, question be solved with this optimal approach, the DNF algorithm. Okay, now let's test the code against the test cases. So here's the code. Let's compile and run it. All right, it's compiling fine, giving us the expected output. Let's try to submit that. Okay, so now it has passed all of the test cases successfully. I hope now you have gotten this uh, optimal approach as well as the other approaches as well. So do solve your question now. And uh, if you find it anywhere difficult, you can ask us in the comments. And if you like the video, then do like it and tell me in the comments. Thanks.